What is up guys? My name is Zach Bias, and I hope you guys are having a wonderful day so far. Today, I'm gonna to be giving you guys a complete beginner's tutorial on Logic Pro X. I remember when I first started making music, it's about three years ago now in Logic, and it was by far like the most confusing thing I've probably ever experienced in my life. Like music software has a steep learning curve. And if you guys are feeling overwhelmed with like, you've no idea what to do in the software, like where to even begin, don't worry, I got you covered. I'm gonna be going over everything you need to know so that you guys can just open up Logic and just get right into making music. So yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. All right guys, so here we are in Logic, and this is basically what it's gonna look like as soon as you open it up. First things first, you guys need to go to Preferences, go to Advanced Tools, and you're gonna wanna make sure that you have all this stuff checked. Like if this is not checked, Logic's already gonna look a little different. You're gonna have wooden, looks like wood stuff here on the side, and it's basically gonna be GarageBand. So you wanna have all this stuff checked. If it's not, it might be a little hard to follow along because you might not have all the features available. So this is where you guys are gonna find all your um, like logics, like control center basically. Under audio, this is where you're gonna find your output device and input device. Right now I'm using a Scarlett 2i2 for speakers. So that is why I have it set to output device and input device. Um, I can also set it to like my built-in microphone input. Right here is where you're gonna find your buffer size. And this tab right here, MIDI, this is where you're going to see your like MIDI keyboard setup. If you click inputs, it should pop up here. Uh, you're gonna wanna make sure that's checked. And as soon as you turn on your MIDI keyboard, you should see something pop up in the right hand corner over here. That's letting you know that your MIDI keyboard is now working. And as soon as you play, just make sure you have a track here and you should be able to hear sound. When you wanna export your track, you do not really wanna to go to export. Uh, you are gonna to want to go to bounce to bounce out your entire section. Export is actually for like, if you just want to bounce out one track out of your entire song as an audio file, a WAV file, you wanna do that. Or if you want to bounce stems, this is where you would go. You would click all tracks as audio files. This is track, this is where you click new track, uh, new audio track, or new software instrument. Uh, you can do that in this top menu bar right here, or you can click this plus button. And um, this is basically just another window that would do that for you. Uh, I'll go ahead and show you guys. This is where you would find your all, all your stock Logic instruments, and uh, you just click create, and bam. EXS pops up, and then you're ready to get started. All right, so next you have this menu bar right here. I don't really use this window too much, to be honest, but it looks like just another way to like select your stock instruments in Logic. So yeah, like, pretty cool. This is like your help button thing. So if you're confused, which I recommend turning this on in the beginning if you're first getting started. Whenever you put your mouse over something, it'll basically tell you what it is, so. This is very, very helpful. So I recommend having this checked, but I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off because I basically know what I'm doing. This right here, the eye is the inspector window. Um, you're gonna be in this window a lot because this is where you have like your individual track stuff. Uh, if you wanna open up, you know, EXS, this is how you would do that on this track and this. It's how you open up like your software instruments once you already have them selected in this window. Also in the inspector window, uh, you can also select uh, your instruments here. So if you click this up and down arrow thing, you can see all your um, stock Logic instruments here. So if you want to use Alchemy, you just click this and it'll change it. And um, Alchemy will open up. Also, where you find your third party instruments is down here. So you're gonna to go to AU Instruments, and here I have like Contact and Silent. Down here is where you're gonna find all your audio manipulation tools. So um, that's why you see like EQ here. Uh, you can also find your compressor, like under Dynamics, Compressor. Your Reverb is down here as well. Space Designer, I always use that. 
Here's your volume for your individual track. As you notice, like this moves this up here. Sends is your bus. I won't really go into too much detail for that right now. And then this button here. Okay, so this is your drop down menu thing. So I don't really use this too much here. Uh, the only thing I do use would be this color thing. So let's say like I have an empty MIDI region here. And all I did was just right click and create empty region. If I want it to be like blue or something or purple or whatever color you want, this is basically where you could do that. This right here is smart controls. Okay, I really don't use this too much um, because basically you find that here. Like if you open this up, this is where you find everything. And if like you wanna EQ, yes you have that, but you can also just click this over here and this pops up. Or you can click this and that, that also does it. So I don't really use that too much. Uh, this is your mixer window. Uh, you can also click X on your keyboard and it is the keyboard shortcut for the mixer window. Okay, so this is the piano roll. You can also press P and that opens it up as well. Um, so this is where you can like draw in notes. All you gotta do is just hold command and you can just draw stuff and then you click and drag. So that's how you would do that. To be honest, I'm, I'm a, like a MIDI keyboard player, so I don't really do it this way too much, but I know a lot of people do, so that's how you would do that. Also, since we're in the piano roll right now, uh, I'll just go ahead and show you guys the quantize button. It's this Q right here. Uh, a lot of people are going to use this. It's a very important button. So if you wanna do 16th note quantization, you're gonna wanna click that Q. Uh, but if you don't want to do 16, you want to do like half notes or four, quarter notes or eighth notes, this is basically you would change it and it'll go ahead and do that. Also velocity, you could highlight a note and do that. Um, that's how you do velocity. Also if you want to grab a note and move that same note up, all you do is click, hold option and drag up. So yeah, that's basically the piano roll, the score is basically where you can, it'll, it'll basically transform your MIDI into actual like notes on a, um, on a score sheet of music. Step editor, I really don't use this too much to be honest. Smart tempo, I don't really use that too much to be honest either. Up here, you're gonna have your stop button, your play button. Uh, you could also just hit space bar. Uh, you're gonna have your record button. So if you want to record something, you can click up there. Well, you can mute that. And you can just... And that's how you would do that. Um, you can highlight it, click delete, or uh, you can drag it out. Or if you want to move it, you hold option, click and drag. That's basically how you would do that. Uh, this is your uh, cycle range. Um, so you can click this up here, or you can go ahead and click C on your keyboard and that will pop up. Also, what you can do if this isn't here, you can just click here, anywhere up in this top area and just click and drag and it'll, it'll move over. Uh, but this basically like loops it. So if you want to create like a loop, you basically just highlight where you want it to loop. For this tutorial, we'll just put it here. go quiet because this is where the MIDI is and it'll just loop. So yeah, this if you want to like create like an eight bar loop or four bar loop of a B or a song or something, this is basically how you do that. This right here is basically where you can change this window. So like here you have beats and project and this is what this looks like. Uh, you can make it bigger. Uh, you can make it just show you the time. So yeah, this is a pretty important window. So I'll typically have it, honestly, at beats and time, just because I like to like look at the time of the song to see like how long it's going. But if you want to change the tempo of the song, this is where you would do it. So Logic automatically does it at stock 120 BPM, but if you want to change it to 100 or 80, that's how you would do that. And it will automatically, you know, shift it to that. This button, I'm not really quite sure what it does. Uh, I don't really use it that much. This button, I'm not quite sure what it does either. Oh, okay, so it's the solo button. Okay, so basically you can do that here. Like this is the solo button on your track. If you want to solo track, 
this is where you would do it. If you want to mute a track, this is where you would also do it. You click M, or you can just click M on your keyboard or S on your keyboard, and that is how you would do that. Yeah, so like your metronome, you can click that, and it'll be the metronome for you. You can also turn it off. You can customize it here in this window. Uh, this right here is where you can change the key of your song. So if you want to play in the key of A minor, it doesn't necessarily change your chords to the key of e A minor, but it's just like a mental note for you to let you know that, oh, this song is in the key of A minor uh, or whatever the heck you want it to be. Right here is where you can change it to 4-4 um, four, four time signature or 6-8 or customize it however you want. Logic's stock time signature is 4-4 four, because four, most songs are written in that. Right here is the master volume fader. To be honest, I never touch that. Just leave it at zero because you can just adjust the volume on these individual tracks here. Over here is your list editors button. I never use this, never use the marker window or the tempo window or this, to be honest. Don't really know, your notepads, okay. Never use that either, your loops. Okay, so this is uh, a window that is actually pretty helpful. So this, so this has like a lot of logic stock uh, loops and it has quite a number of loops. Uh, you can use these in any of your songs. Uh, you can also go here and click instrument and just kind of like, like it help you find the sounds a lot easier. So if I want to like a shaker or loop or something, and it also tells you the BPM here. Um, let's see. So this project is at 80. So if you drag this in here, uh, Logic automatically should put it at tempo 80 because it's an Apple loop and it automatically should change it. It doesn't do that if you bring in third party loops and you would have to do that. Genre, you can also organize this by genre if you want. Right here is where you have your expanding tabs. Um, so this is obviously vertical and this will be horizontal. You can also just click command, command arrow key. So command up, command down and command side arrows. Um, and that that's another way to do it as well. So this right here, these two uh, symbol icon things, this is where you find your tools. So like right now we're on pointer tools, so that's why you see a mouse here. But if you were to go to like eraser tool, and probably click, yeah, it erases it. To be honest, I don't really use this too much because you can honestly just double click and press delete on your keyboard um, and then bring it back uh, if you didn't mean to do that. And the way you do that is just command Z um, pretty typical stuff like undo, delete, feel like that's kind of intuitive. But yeah, here's all your other tools. Now the tools I do use most are your um, fade tool. So this is a pretty important tool. So your fade tool, if you get your mouse and hover at the end, this is how you would do a fade or you can fade in. It kind of just fades it in volume wise. It's kind of like uh, another way to do automation if that's what you'd want to do. Here's your automation tools. Uh, and these tools are also very important. How you show automation in Logic is you're gonna wanna click A on your keyboard, uh, and automation will pop up. The other way to also do it is to click this button here. Also, how you pull this up very fast is you could like move your mouse up here to click it, but you could also just press T on your keyboard, it'll pop up, and then here are the keyboard shortcuts. So like, if you press T, T, it takes you back to the arrow. If you press T, uh, W, this is how you do your automation curves. And those are probably the two keyboard shortcuts that I use the most when drawing automation. So like how you'd wanna click automation is you're gonna wanna go to your pointer tool, then click here. This is your volume. Uh, and if you wanna do volume automation, just click, um, drag up and whatnot. If you wanna do a vo uh, automation volume curve, you click T, W, that's the curve tool. Uh, and you go ahead and click and drag. Uh, you can pretty much do it however you want. Yeah, you can create some weird shapes. Yeah, that's how you would do that. Uh, and to get out of that, you just click A again, or you can go ahead and click this. Uh, right here is your flex time stuff. So if you wanna go ahead and do like rhythmic slicing, blah, 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 that's where you would do that. If you have a recording, you'd wanna 
basically click rhythmic and it'll analyze it. And if you want to quantize your audio, um, you'd want to look for quantize, which is right here. You click eighth notes or whatever. This audio is already quantized because it's a third party loop. So it doesn't need quantization. But if that's what you want to do, this is basically how you would do it. You could also manipulate the audio like this. Um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff you can do. All right, so next thing I'm gonna show you guys is how to use Drummer in Logic. Drummer is like Logic's own drummer that you get. To be honest, I don't really use it too much. I am a user of like third-party loops and um, samples and stuff, so I use Splice personally, but Drummer is pretty cool. You do get like cool drum samples so you can choose like what you're looking for here. So like for example, like Nightlife, you press play. You can turn down the percussion, changes it. You can just do the kick. To be honest, it's like very heavily presetted, so that's why I don't like using it, but it does have some cool drums. Um, what you can do is like you can like cut out the you can cut out specific sections of this loop that you like and then just use those bits and pieces. Also, what you can do is kind of like move this yellow dot around. So like you press play, you can make the beat apparently more complex, but you can also make it soft. You made simple. And you can kind of change it to whatever you want. You can also like take out some hats here. Uh, if you don't want the hats, uh, you can take that out here. Like let's say you just want a shaker, you can put that in here. Or here, let's say you don't want a kick, but you just want a snare and a clap. You can do that. And you can like, you can manipulate it. It's, it's a pretty cool um, like, in stock drummer that Logic has and like it comes with the program like you don't have to pay any extra for it So it's actually pretty cool. All right guys So that concludes my Logic Pro X beginner's guide tutorial as you may know I'm wearing different clothes than I was in the intro and that's because it took me a couple days to film this so that that's why I'm wearing different clothes. But yeah, I hope you guys found this tutorial very helpful. I really tried to go over everything in a nutshell so that you guys can just have a really good general understanding of how Logic works so that you guys can just open it up and get right to the music making process. I know I couldn't go over everything because my goodness, that'd be one heck of a ridiculously long video. But yeah, I also tried to give you guys some really good uh, keyboard shortcut tips. I showed you pretty much how to Use all the important ones anyway. There's definitely a lot of other ones, but um, the ones that I did mention, you'll probably be using a lot because I know I definitely use them a lot. But all right guys, so I think I'm gonna end the video here. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Also, feel free to leave a comment down below. I will be checking them. And if you guys have any questions, I will do my best at answering them. And uh, with that being said, guys, I'm gonna end the video here. Y'all take it easy. All right. Bye. And was it real or just pretend? Tell me why you wanna end. Was he really just a friend?